So in angle of prism experiment, we have considered that a parallel beam of light will fall on the prism like this on both the edges on both the reflecting edges of this prism and they will be reflected in these directions and we were measuring the position of telescope at this point A and this point B, and we were considering the difference of these two, that is this angle, we were considering that this angle will be equal to two theta, two A, where the angle of prism was A. For the derivation of this, why this particular angle, why the position of this A and B is equal to 2A, what we can do is, okay, I will draw. The prism. And I will consider some angles with the help of some basic geometry. I will prove that that particular angle was equal to should be equal to 2A. Suppose the parallel be parallel beam hits this prism at these two different positions, and they will be reflected in these directions. I will make normal to the surface. Okay. I will just extend these lines, the parallel beam lines, with a dotted line. I will make some normal so that I can define my angle of incidence. And I will extend the reflected rays if I redraw my reflected rays back into the prism. Then it will appear to be made at this point. Let's say this point is X. Okay. And this X angle X I was considering is twice of A. Right. So to prove this, whether this angle will be A or not, let's consider. This angle is theta. Then I can see, okay, I will, okay, this angle is theta. Then again, this angle will also be theta. Okay, I should name some points on this triangle. Let's call this point as A, this point as B, and this point as C. And I am also joining, I am also creating a parallel ray, which is just incident on the edge of this prism. Okay. So from this, I have to prove angle X is equal to twice of A. 
so if this angle is theta if this angle is theta i was considering this angle was theta so angle again this angle will be theta and this will also be this angle will also be equal to theta so angle a and why it is so because you can see this theta angle this theta angle okay this angle and this angle should be equal because they are incidence angle and if these angles are equal and this is 90 degree so this angle will be 90 minus i this angle will be 90 minus i and this angle will also be equal to 90 minus i so i can write this angle are vertically opposite angle they must be equal and this angle should also be equal to theta and if this angle is theta and these two are parallel rays then these angles this theta this angle and this angle should also be same so this again this will become theta so this should be the case now in triangle axb in triangle axb in triangle axb angle axb will be equal to 180 minus 2 theta right similarly for this this side of prism this will be angle theta dash i will say now it uh, does not necessarily equal to this theta i am just calling it as theta dash but again this angle will be theta dash because they are vertically opposite angle now if this angle if both of these angles are equal then again this angle must be equal to theta dash if this angle is theta dash these two are parallel rays this again will be theta dash so in this way i can write in triangle a x c angle a x c will be equal to 180 minus 2 theta dash right triangle a uh, angle a x c we have found this angle and we have found this angle a x b if i add both of these angles they will be they will give me angle b x c and this will be equal to 360 if i add both these angles this angle and this angle this will give me 360 minus twice of theta plus theta dash right bxc will give me theta 360 minus 2 twice of theta plus theta dash now this angle bxc i will say this is inner angle by definition and the outer angle bxc this angle will be equal to 360 minus inner angle bxc so this angle bxc will be equal to 360 minus 360 minus twice of theta plus theta dash so it will be equal to twice of theta plus theta dash now this theta and theta dash i can see this was my theta this was my theta dash 
So I can replace this theta and theta dash with the summation of theta and theta dash will give me twice of a. So in this way, you can say angle X, outer angle X should be equal to twice of a. Right. That's why if we measure the position of telescope on this edge, on this side, and on this side, and if I make that difference between these two angles, then that angle will give me twice the value of angle of freezer. So I hope all of you have done this part and you must have you must have got the value of a to lie someone in the somewhere in the range of 59 to 61 degree. Right. So now it is very easy to understand with the help of this ray diagram. It is very easy to understand how we can use these ray diagrams to find out the angle of prism. The second part of this labors. is to find refractive index of prism. A second experiment based on the same phenomena is your to find out the refractive index of prism. This experiment we will also doing from the same virtual lab. Now to find out the resist to find out the refractive index of this given material of which this prism is made we can use the condition we can check actually we can check condition of minimum deviation and with the help of this angle of minimum deviation With the help of this angle of numerical value of this angle of minimum deviation, we can find out experimentally, we can find out the refractive index of this material by this expression sine delta m plus a. by 2 divided by sine of a by 2. Right. If we can find, I will define this term minimum deviation. If we can find the angle of minimum deviation, then with the help of this formula, yes, for this experiment, you are supposed to use the value of A, the value of angle of prism calculated in the previous experiment. And with the help of this formula, you can calculate the mu, that is refractive index of this material, which is used to make this prism. So what is this deviation, angle of minimum deviation C? First, I will define the term deviation whenever a light ray is passed through a prism whenever a light ray is passed through a prism then it will deviate it will deviate from its main course from its original course and it will deviate towards the normal because it was traveling from 
rarer medium to denser medium so let's see how a ray will bend suppose a ray is inciding on this prism at this angle and the normal i can draw like this normal to the surface i am drawing and this particular angle i am calling as angle of incidence now because it is traveling from rarer to denser medium it will bend towards the normal like this it will bend towards the normal like this let's call this angle as r1 and it will reach at this point let's say this point is your q and again okay if i draw a normal at this point now you can see the angle of incidence at this interface at this interface or you can say at point r the angle of incidence at point r is becoming r i am calling this as r2 i am calling this angle as r2 now if this ray this ray qr is traveling from denser to rarer medium it will bend away from the normal right it will bend away from the normal and i am calling this angle as angle of emergence right so the ray diagram should look like something like this there was a angle of incidence based on this i the ray will because the ray is traveling from rarer to denser medium it will bend away from the normal it will bend towards the normal sorry so it will make angle r1 with the normal this ray when it will hit the interface denser rarer interface it will bend away from the normal and the angle this emergent ray is making with the normal i am calling that as angle of emergence e right and if i extend these lines extend the angle, uh, incidence line incident line in this direction and emergence light in this direction emergent light emergent ray in this direction then you can see without the prism without the prism this light ray this light ray p should have been gone to this direction but with the double refraction with the help of double refraction this light ray is bent from its original course and you can say it is deviated this light ray is deviated with this angle from its original course because of the double refraction this light ray p is deviated okay i will call this as s this light ray deviated from its original course and is now is in the direction of s and this angle i am calling as delta and this delta is called angle of deviation this angle this delta is called angle of deviation so as soon as you change the angle of incidence this angle of e also will also change and this delta will also change but the relationship between this d this delta the relationship between delta and i 
if i tell you numerically what is the what is the relation if i tell you the expression between this delta and i then you will see this delta is neither directly proportional to i and is neither inversely proportional to i what i mean to say is for increasing i with increase in i this delta will initially it will start decreasing but after some time it will this delta this angle of deviation will again start increasing and experimentally it has been observed that the point at which this, this delta is minimum this angle of deviation is minimum that angle at that angle this angle of incidence is equal to angle of emergence okay let's see what is the relationship between this delta and i if i can see this delta is equal to i plus sine inverse of n sine of a minus sine inverse sine i divided by n the refractive index minus a angle of reason so you can see that the angle of deviation is related to the angle of incidence as well as the angle of prism as well as the refractive index of material which we are using in this prism but from this expression i can say that this is very complex expression and if i want to find the minimum and maximum of this delta at which point for which values of i and for which values of n this delta will go uh, will go to a minimum or maximum value then i can simply yes i can do i can find this delta delta the differential of this deviation angle the differential of this differential uh, deviation angle with respect to i and i will put it equal to 0 and i will find what will be the value of i for finding any minimum and maxima we do this now for any from ex any expression we will differentiate uh, take differential of that expression with respect to the variable for which we want to find the value at which particular value of i the delta will be minimum or maximum okay if it is minimum then the second differential of this will be negative will be positive sorry right but instead of solving all this equation i can also solve this ex uh, equation but instead of solving this equation what i will do is i will prefer the experimental method to determine delta m which is suppose i just for different values of incidence angle for different for different values of incidence angle i can measure this delta experimentally simply i will place a prism i will make the source at different angle and i will calculate this emergent i will trace this emergent ray and with the help of this emergent ray and with the help of this incident ray i can find the angle of deviation easily uh, 12th class mein aap logo ne kiya hoga slab ke case mein kiya hoga prism ke case mein nahi kiya hoga wo pin laga ke jo aap uh, angle of deviation find karte the similarly in this case also experimentally i can find the variation of this delta with respect to i and experimentally if i plot this delta versus i curve it will follow something like this so yes it is showing the same behavior this expression was telling me initially with the increase in i initially with the increase in i the angle of deviation will decrease but after a particular value of i the angle of deviation will start increasing again and this point and this point 
this point i will call as delta m that is point of minimum deviation at which the light entering into the prism will be minimum minimal deviated from its original course from its original direction and experimentally we can find that this condition of this condition of this minimum deviation tells us that tells us that at this particular condition i is equal to e the angle of emergent angle of emergence is equal to angle of incidence incidence so yes theoretically instead of solving this equation this expression i will just practically see how this deviation will change with respect to i and at the point of minimum deviation and at the point of minimum deviation i will assume that my angle of incidence is equal to angle of emergence now why i am focusing on this point that angle of at angle of minimum deviation these two angles will be equal because in the derivation of this formula in the derivation of this formula i will assume i will assume that i is equal to e then only i can simplify my expression to this formula so experimentally i will try to find the angle of minimum deviation at which the ray is getting minimal deviation from the its original course at that point i will calculate this delta m i will assume that i is equal to e so that this formula will hold good and i have value of a from the previous previously i have value of a so by using this formula i can find this mu now the concept of this condition of minimum deviation i was introducing because i will be needing this point i will be needing this point in the derivation of this formula mu right so let's see how a ray will be deviated during its double refraction and i will with the help of ray diagrams i will derive this formula mu is equal to delta m a plus delta m by 2 divided by sin a by 2 okay so again i will see pause this is the incidence ray i am calling this ray as p this ray when hit the surface of this interface of this prism it will be deviated if this angle is i if this angle is i then this ray will be traveling let's say like this and this angle is r1 the angle of refraction from this interface let's say q again at the interface r this light will bend away from the normal this light ray will bend away from the normal and i am calling this ray as s this will be my angle of emergence and this angle i am calling as r2 right 
and my angle of deviation was my angle of deviation was this angle this angle was my angle of deviation okay this i will call as n this i will call as m right so in triangle in quadrilateral m q i will write in quadrilateral m q n r i can see okay i will consider this quadrilateral later later but i want to see i am calling this is a this is b this is c and i am considering a q n r instead of m q n r i am considering a q n r now this now in this a q n r you can see this angle a q n a q n is equal to 90 degree right because it is the perpendicular to the surface similarly angle a r n is also 90 degree because it is again normal to the surface so in this quadrilateral a q n r angle a plus 90 degree plus angle q n r angle q n r plus 90 degree is equal to 360 right all the angles of all the four angles of quadrilateral will sum to 360 and two of the angles are 90 degree so i can write a plus q n r angle a plus angle q n r is equal to 180 degree right so my first expression is saying the angle a plus angle q n r should be equal to 180 degree now in this triangle in triangle q n r in triangle q n r this r1 plus this r2 plus this angle q n r is should be equal to 180 because the angle of the sum of three angles of rect uh, triangle should be equal to 180 now if i compare these two equations if i compare these two equations i can see that angle of prism a should be equal to r1 plus r2 right if i compare these two equations then i will reach at angle a is should be equal to r1 plus r2 now in triangle mqr in triangle mqr delta this delta i can say will be equal to okay before this i want to say this angle this angle will be equal to i minus r1 because this whole angle is i mq n angle is i vertically opposite angle on two intersecting lines so this mq n will is will be equal to i and this mqr angle mqr will be equal to should be equal to i minus r1 similarly this angle should also be equal to e minus r2 right so i can write 
in this triangle MQR, this delta will be equal to I minus R1 plus E minus R2. Right? Because the this external angle is equal to the should be equal to the sum of opposite internal angles. This delta should be equal to sum of the opposite internal angles. So this delta, if I solve, it will be equal to I plus E minus R1 plus R2. And this R1 plus R2, I just have said it will be equal to A. So this delta is coming to be I plus E minus A. So the angle of deviation is always equal to I plus E minus A. Now, for minimum deviation, for minimum deviation, or you can say at point of minimum deviation, I will write at point of minimum deviation. I told you delta at minimum deviation, I will be equal to E. So, what I can do is if I is equal to E, if I is equal to E, then in this case, if I is equal to E, then in that case, R1 will be equal to R2. R1 will be equal to R2. And in both of these conditions, in both of these conditions, A will now be will can now be replaced. This A can now be replaced as twice of R. I am just calling this as R now. Twice of R. And this delta will be replaced. This delta can be replaced uh, by you can say this I plus E will be equal to, okay. This delta will be equal to I plus I minus A. So, so it will be equal to 2I minus A. And from this, I can see I will be equal to delta M plus A divided by 2. Delta M plus A divided by 2. And this R was this R was equal to A by 2. So I have find out with the help of this ray diagram. I have find out found out the I is equal to delta M plus A by 2 and R is equal to A by 2. Now. We I know from the Snell's law. From the Snell's law. If I apply Snell's law on point, I can say on point Q, then I can say a refractive index mu will be equal to sine of I divided by sine of R. So if I insert the value of I and insert the value of R as arrived at from this derivation, I can see this mu will be equal to sine of delta m plus a by 2 divided by sine of a by 2. Right. So I can find out the refractive index of this prism. To find out experimentally, this delta m now the question is how we can find out this delta m this a condition of minimum deviation experimentally right as i have told you earlier yes at this point we have derived this formula mu is equal to sine delta m plus a by 2 divided by sine a by 2 Now to find out the condition of now to see at which point 
the condition of minimum deviation is being satisfied what you can do is you can take a prism you can make you can put a source at this point you can make a incident light fall on this prism you can find out with the help of telescope the collimator of our spectrometer will provide a ray which will after double refraction from this prism which can be viewed from the telescope now if you rotate if you rotate this prism by rotating the prism table if you rotate this prism then that means you are changing i you are changing incident angle because collimator as well as source is fixed on one end of the spectrometer you can rotate the prism table in that way you are changing the incident angle and with the help of telescope with the help of telescope you will see there is a variation there is a variation in the deviation angle with the help of telescope you can see there will be a variation of deviation angle but at a point suppose you are rotating you are rotating the prism table you are rotating the prism table in this direction and in this direction the slit slit of this source of this the slit uh, of the ray of the rays are being traveling in this direction along with the prism table but at a point it will become stationary the slit will not move the slit will not move with respect to change in the incident angle and after a certain after achieving this point the slit will move backward so actually what is happening is i have told you that delta versus i so the graph of this because of that expression i have told you the graph of this is something like this so as soon as you rotate the prism table as long as you rotate this prism table the angle of deviation will also change but there will be a position of the slit there will be a position of the slit after which the angle of deviation will start increasing again and the slit will look like to move backwards this particular point this particular point experimentally is called point of minimum deviation experimentally you have to find this point delta m so this i will call as observation 1 at which you will observe the phenomena of minimum deviation and to observe the phenomena of minimum deviation you will slightly rotate the prism table in clockwise direction the slit will move in one particular direction but as soon as long as you are rotating the prism table after one point the slit will start moving on the opposite direction on the backward direction that point you have to measure you have to stop at that point and you have to take the observation of the position of telescope at this point then you have to remove this prism and you have to see at which position at which position the direct ray is coming onto the telescope after achieving the condition of minimum deviation and after measuring the position of telescope at this condition of minimum deviation you will remove the prism you will find at which direction on which angle you are able to view the direct ray from this source and you are you will call this as observation point 2 and if you take difference of these two observations if you take difference of these two observation you will be able to find delta m 
you will be able to find delta m and now if you can see from the formula the there are only two parameters on right hand side delta m and a a you have previously found delta m with the help of this condition of minimum deviation you can find this delta m so you can find out with the help of this formula you can find out the refractive index okay so i will show you how condition of minimum deviation will look like on this simulator as well as how this will look like on your original spectrometer right so <coughs> this refractive index of material of prism you can say okay i will just i will directly go to simulator I will focus this telescope. Schuster focusing this comb bolte the. I will switch on the light. I will focus the slit. And slit width is fine. I will place the prism. Now I have to rotate this vernier table or prism table like this. at this at a particular angle okay let's say i am moving this as this angle right now you can say you now you can see the incident light will come from the collimator and it will strike on this interface at this position right and after double refraction after double refraction the emergent ray should come in this direction the emergent ray should come in this direction so i have to rotate my telescope like this and i should be able to see this slit now this slit i can see this slit you can see is actually after arriving from the collimator at this phase it suffers the light ray suffers double refraction and it is coming out from the other face at this angle right so simply i can find this slit by this idea of this uh, angle ki at this particular angle the slit should be there now what i can do is i will start moving this vernier table very fine with the help of this fine angle slider i will start moving this vernier table in very fine direction so see actually we have a crow we have uh, seen the condition of minimum deviation at this point see i am decreasing i am rotating this prism table right and i am continuously decreasing you can see from the numbers it is 6.5 now i am continuously decreasing this 6.3 6.2 and the slit is moving towards my right hand right i am decreasing this uh, number vernier table 6.2 6.1 6.0 5.9 5.8 point 5.7 it is continuously moving to my right but see at a in between point it has it is moving again backwards towards my left so the condition of minimum deviation was somewhere here and i have to find i have to match this condition of minimum deviation at my cross wire at my cross wire so i will rotate my telescope slightly i will turn my telescope okay now i can see this condition is at cross wire again i will again to verify i will again move the vernier table you can see it is going in left direction it has gone to left direction okay now i will start moving the vernier table you will see on decreasing this the slit is moving to towards my right side and it will go back 
from this cross wire point. Right? So, okay. So you have seen by in a single direction, if I rotate my vernier table, my slit is coming to the center of view at the cross wire, it touches, it touches the cross wire, and then it will go back to its initial direction. So I can say at this point, at this point, yes, I have achieved the condition of minimum deviation. I have achieved the condition of minimum deviation. This is your position one, which we have discussed. This is your position one, observation one, observation point one, telescope at which we are seeing the condition of minimum deviation. So you can, you have to take observations at this point of both verniers, vernier one and vernier two. Roughly, if I can say the observation on vernier one scale is 70, 69, 68. Okay. So roughly, I can say this is around 68 degrees. 68 degrees. So to find out the observation for direct ray, to find out the observation for direct ray, what I will do is I will remove the prism. I will remove the prism. So I will remove the prism and I will rotate my telescope to see the direct ray. Okay, yes, in this direction I can see. Of course, without prism, it should be a straight line. The collimator and telescope should be in straight line. So yes, at this point I can see, I can observing a direct ray coming from the collimator. Again, this is at 115, around 100, oh, sorry, 105. It is at 105. So, how many were 68 percent. 68 pe thi, ye 105 pe hai. So, the difference between these observations, 68 and 105 is equal to my delta M. So, if I see this delta M will be equal to the difference of those x of 105 and 68 degree. So it will be 37 degree. Right. So I have found with this simple experiment, I have find I have found the value of delta M. If I use this delta M in my formula, which was sine A plus delta M by 2 divided by sine A by 2. A I am considering as 60 for simplification and this delta m is 37 so if i solve this it will be sine 97 by 2 60 plus 37 is 97 97 is 48.5 degree right and this sine 30 is sine uh, a by 2 is 30 so sine 30 is half right so it will be refractive index will be equal to twice of sine 48.5 right so if i i can calculate the value of sine 48 by 5 sine if i talk in degrees sine 48.5 will be equal to 0 0.748 right it will be equal to 0 0.748 so the mu will be equal to twice of 0 0.748 so it will be roughly around 1.5 yes and the refractive index of glass is equal to as this prism is made up of glass so refractive index of glass is it is around 1.5 so we are getting it correct right but yes, numerically, the value, exact value will come around, I think, 1.4 to 1.56. Right. But roughly, it is coming to be 1.5. That is fine. So you have to perform this experiment with the help of this 
virtual lab you have to find the refractive index by using that formula you can use this procedure wahi same procedure hai jo maine bataya hai aapko but the observation table should be something like this okay aise ho sakti hai ya humne jo ppt bana rakhi hai waisi ho sakti hai ऐसी हो सकती है एंगल ऑफ फ्रीजम के लिए ये था एंगल ऑफ मिनिमम डेविएशन के लिए ओके फॉर अ सिंगल कलर अभी तो सिंगल कलर ही है वाइट लाइट यूज नहीं किया हमने तो फॉर अ सिंगल कलर यू कैन फाइंड फॉर येलो कलर इट सेल्फ यू कैन फाइंड दिस टाइप मेन स्केल रीडिंग देखना है वर्नियर स्केल रीडिंग देखना है टोटल ऑब्जर्वेशन पॉइंट होना चाहिए आपके पास डिस्पर उसका डेविएटेड डेविएटेड रे का और डायरेक्ट रे का दोनों का और उन दोनों का जो डिफरेंस होगा दैट विल गिव यू डेल्टा एम एंड यू हैव टू फाइंड मिनिमम डेल्टा मीन डेल्टा एम मीन डेल्टा एम राइट तो उससे आप कर सकते हैं इसको इजीली 